Today I want to talk with you about the best composition tools in Affinity Photo and how to use them. Hello my friends and let's get started. So composition is a pretty important part in photography but also in editing in post and there's a lot of different ways to go about that. So we want to look at those. The first thing you can see here is the golden ratio and we will look at that in a second but before we do that, I want to point your attention towards the crop tool because the crop tool is very good for figuring out your composition even if you're not cropping anything. So let's click on that and up here then we have our tool line with all these kind of different settings. And the first thing that's important is over here where it says mode, you can set different ratios and you can even set custom ratios and add them as presets. For example here I added 16 to 9 which I often use because I do a lot of things for the screen. So you can add here any kind of ratio that you want to use. So let's go with 16 to 9 and right away you have this kind of grid here with which is playing by the rule of thirds and that is one method you can use but what you can see here is you have just the grid and this is a bit problematic because this is not really showing you what the end result is going to look like. So what you want to do right now is to click over here where it says darken border. So that is a pretty important tool. And now you can see with the darkened borders, it's much easier to see what the end result is actually going to look like. And even if you're not cropping right now, this is already giving you a good preview and a good idea to think about how to progress with your pictures, what should be in the pictures, uh, um, in the end result of the picture what kind of elements and what relations should they have to each other and this is also why we have these guidelines so when you look over here it says overlay and there is different options here you can of course have none so you see the picture without any overlay which is good to test your result um, after you use the overlays but then you have three others which are thirds grid golden spiral and diagonals and I want to explain to you how to use them and why all of them are important but all of them give you very different results so it's important to understand them. So first of all let's go with the easiest one with it, which is the third grid and that works pretty well because even if you would resize let's go here from the mode to unconstrained so I can change this to any kind of size you can see that this automatically adapts my third grid to any size or shape that I want to use it in and to understand what thirds is doing the idea of the thirds is that instead of having your main subject in the middle for example if we have this guy here as our main subject or the door for example instead of having this door in the middle like it is now and you can see it's a pretty sturdy and powerful uh, composition because the main objective of the image is in the middle of the image but when I use my um, crop tool and then go and put this to the side to one side for example here I can now resize the picture until I have a composition where this is in the third and it's not just you can put it of course in the third like this so it's level in the middle but you could also put it like this so it's either on the lower crossing of these two lines or the upper crossing of these two lines and of course this will give you different results so for example if we would take it like this let's see what the result would be so you can see now it's off to the side and the picture looks more dynamic than before less sturdy less constrained and more dynamic because the main objective is more off to the side. I didn't look at the other parts so for example down here where I have my mouse you can see that we have this black shadow and it's parallel to the lower line of our picture and here is a white or shiny line that's parallel to the lower border of the picture that's probably not a good idea to cut it like that um, but you can see that the concept of the picture changed. So let's go back and use our crop tool again. Maybe make this guy the center point here. 
And what we can try to do, let's go back to 16 to 9. So we have a fixed ratio and we can play with that. What we can try to do, for example, is um, to use this guy as the main objective of our picture and then try to have a second interesting thing on the opposite um, crossing of these lines. So maybe this um, light shield over here. So we have a light point over here and we have the guy over here. It doesn't have to be exactly on him. It's not like a sniper uh, gun cross. It's more like in this kind of area. He should be in this kind of area and the second element should be in the kind of the other area. So if we crop it like this, you can see it's becoming an interesting scene. It's pretty dynamic. We're not cutting off on any kind of uh, lines that are too close uh, to the border. So that's good. And also we didn't cut off his legs. I, I found that when you cut off the legs of him, it doesn't look good. So this is basically, let's go back here, uh, cancel. This is the rule of thirds, but now we are going to look at something different and that is the golden spiral or the golden ratio or the Fibonacci curve. There's a lot of names for that. You can also see that this is changing um, when I resize my rectangle. The problem here is it is either like this or it is like this, but there is no way that I could figure out that you could actually bring this spiral down here to the other side you can't rotate the spiral i really found that to be a big problem but what you can do about that is just download i would link in the in uh, in the video description a file that you can download a png file and you can set your file so you can make a new file with any kind of ratio for example here i again have 16 to 9 as the ratio and you can just um, bend it until it has the right ratio um, and you can work with that. So you can save this or copy this over, export it as a PNG, import it in the other file. I've already done this and I have already inverted this, which is also important um, because if we invert this back, well, I'm on the wrong layer, sorry. If you invert this back, you can see it's black and it doesn't really help us too much. But I invert it again so it's white and now I have the chance to use this and rotate it any way I want. And that's pretty good. And this gives me a lot more ability um, to work with this curve. So that's nice. So I can resize that and then I just can use the crop, crop tool and come close to what I decided with this. And you can see right now because I have this um, spiral, the beginning of the spiral down here, I can use it on the guy and try to find some interesting relations with the rest of the line. So for example, the spiral is coming out here and going into this bike. So also following the lines of the bike and then it's coming up here to the lights and also connecting the lights with this other window over here. So that's kind of an interesting um, composition that we have here. So now if we use our crop tool and we would cut it out like that, go to 16 to 9, bring this on the right size. There we go. Just pull it down here. It's actually a little bit bigger, but that doesn't matter too much. Okay, there we go. So now if I click apply, I have a different composition than before. So this is not a composition of thirds, but it looks interesting. It has a very different dynamic than before with the rule of thirds. We can actually look at that. So if I use my crop tool again, you can see that the rule of thirds would put ha have put the guy more to the center of the picture and um, ha would have brought us to cut out the picture closer to get also this element in here. So it's kind of a different dynamic. And I feel like this, if you look at that picture, even though it's also 16 to 9, I feel like this picture looks wider than 
the picture we have looked before it has the exact same ratio but because the elements are spread out differently in the picture it has a different dynamic I think it looks wider and it has a smoother flow so it's kind of interesting uh, to play with these elements which also should fit the concept of what you want to work on okay so now we have another concept still and that is a bit um, this is a bit uh, complex maybe to understand and not too complex but I think at first sight you wouldn't really know what to do with that and that is the diagonals so we have these the diagonals diagonals I don't know okay so we have these and they look pretty strange what what is this what are you going to do with that it's kind of alien looking why are there all these lines so the concept behind this is and I will also link the Wikipedia um, pages about this you can look it up here so we have the rule of thirds we have the golden ratio I will link all of this in the video description and there we have the diagonal method and this was researched by a Dutch photographer and lecturer called Erwin Westhoff and he found out that a lot of classic paintings have important elements of their picture on a diagonal line that is going 45 degrees through the picture so this is why we have crosses that are going 45 degrees through the picture and he found that other than the rule of thirds these don't depend too much on the ratio of the picture or that they are spread out evenly over the picture um, instead he found that you have these kind of diagonal lines but they are happening anywhere in the picture basically they don't really depend too much on each other and not in a golden ratio and not in a rule of third but more on this kind of diagonal line but still they get you interesting results so it's really interesting to read through this um, here it's not very long as you can see but when you know how to do that that's interesting you can work with that and you can try to figure something out that's interesting to your picture and again it will give you a different result so of course now when we have 16 to 9 as our relation um, these are always in the same place I can't move them around too much which is maybe not the complete idea of how to use them so maybe make your own diagonal lines because now you still have a fixed ratio between them and you have this kind of square um, that is right in the center of the picture but you can still use it in that way if you want to and you can find some interesting relations um, between elements in the picture that are happening on a diagonal line and this again will give you a different kind of results um, for example here we could connect the guy with the stuff here in the background so we have this kind of bike here we have the guy here we have the door here and we have the light here so all of these are um, how can I say intense elements of the picture and on the other side um, we have this window and the light up here again with the sign over the door so we have interesting elements spread out over the diagonal of course you can find other interesting elements in the picture so if we cut this again it's also an interesting picture that you get but again it looks different so if we compare this again let's compare this to um, rule of thirds you can see it's in a different area it's a different position and um, with the Fibonacci curve or the golden ratio it's kind of similar in this um, result that we have here um, but of course you can find other results with that so um, and like I said it doesn't depend and this is the important part maybe uh, let's go back and show this uh, the, uh, the important part here is that um, if I would cut my picture in a different kind of uh, there we go in a different kind of ratio I would have a different result um, that I could not have with the other uh, tools that I have so this would spread out but you can see um, this this is still um, in, in the thirds area uh, but when I change this to the diagonals you can see that those are spreading out more to the edge of the picture so you have different kinds um, that you couldn't 
use also when I change back to the golden spiral or golden ratio you can see that those are spreading out differently over the pictures than the diagonals are going in the picture so I think this is maybe the least intuitive and most complex to understand tool so maybe try to stick with the other tool the thirds and the golden spiral but it's interesting to experiment with all of them uh, to find out different interesting ratios and you can really see how the picture is changing depending on what kind of um, tool you use to create your composition so that is a really important part and of course you should at least try have a look at how these ratios um, tend to change your picture influence um, the way you would build up your composition because not only does this give you an interesting idea about how to use composition it also gives you a different eye a different different view when you go out and out and take your pictures or even build compositions from different elements uh, to look at how to place elements in a picture and how to work with these different kind of dynamics in a picture so these are interesting tools either as a guide to use them directly or as an inspiration for your next photographs and for um, kind of inspiration to still work free with your composition. So you can use it either way as a tool or inspiration. Thank you very much for watching this episode. I hope it was interesting. Please leave some comments if you use these kind of compositions, how they influence your work. And see you in the next video. If you like my videos, I do two tutorials per week. So maybe subscribe and hit the little bell so you get informed. If you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon where you can get my files with all the layers. You can get feedback on your own creations and we can talk about the topics that are interesting to you or problems that you need help with. Thank you very much and see you. Bye.